The next several videos will explore how to leverage the Atomsphere API. In this module, we will dive deeper into the Atomsphere API and look at some use cases and examples and follow along with a few exercises as well. The Atomsphere API provides programmatic access to functionality that is normally accessed through the Atomsphere application. The API is built around an object verb hierarchy. This hierarchy parallels the basic object oriented programming paradigm as well as the web service implementation behind REST. Within the Atomsphere API, you will find objects and those objects have operations. The objects are things like account, Atom startup properties, environment, and process Atom attachment. And the operations for these objects are things such as get, query, and update. All Atomsphere API calls are authenticated by Atomsphere username and account ID. The account ID is used as the general context for any API call. The Atomsphere API has been developed with both a SOAP and a REST-ish implementation. So first is the objects. These represent structures and relationships within Atomsphere. For example, account provides information on the account like users, licensing, and general information. Atom startup properties will show the startup properties for that runtime. Environment will show the information containing the type, user-defined name, and a system-defined unique ID for the environment. And process atom attachment enables the attachment or detachment of a process to or from a particular atom. Now these are not all of the objects available. We will see a list of everything in the following slides. As you can see, not every method is available for every object and that there are a lot of objects. In fact, we have four slides of objects. But you can see here that you have methods for accounts, atoms, and extensions. Custom tracked fields, deployment, and environments are touched on here. Slide three shows more environment objects along with execution and the start of the process object. And slide four continues with the process object and more. All of this information is available to you inside the user guide. Just search for API objects and you can see all this data and much more detail available for you there. Each object that you just saw has some allowable operations or methods. The get method retrieves the properties from the object. The bulk get operation retrieves the properties having the specified IDs to a maximum of 100. You can query for a set of fields and allowed values. Query returns a set of objects matching the query logic or a null return. Update and create are only available on some objects. For delete operations, if your tools do not support sending HTTP delete requests, you can use the HTTP get with a query string of method equals delete. It's important to note that some of the methods require Atom management permissions. The structure of Atomsphere API query filter allows you to perform complex queries. A query filter can be composed of simple expressions and a grouping expression. So a simple expression consists of a property or field whose value is to be tested, then an operator which describes the type of comparison to perform, and then the argument to follow. A grouping expression contains the logical operator, which is AND or OR, and has nested expressions within it. These nested expressions can be either simple expressions or other grouping expressions. So here is an example of a query. Even if you're not familiar with the query syntax, you can look at the hierarchical structure and look at the keywords for operator and argument and get a good sense of what's happening here. So in this example, it is querying on this kind of expression overall. It's checking if ABC is equal to 123, if DEF is between 456 and 789, and GHI is greater than 123, and JKL is equal to zero. Here's an example of an object, the schedule object query. This example shows a six day schedule with a separate schedule for Saturday. 
This is an example of the documentation that's available in the user guide for different objects. The fields specified here are used to specify execution times in the scheduling dialog. And you'll note that in the scheduling fields, an asterisk indicates that the schedule should run every minute or hour or day of the week, wherever that asterisk exists. Beyond the operations that we just covered, the Dell Boomi Atomsphere API enables the following actions as well to cancel an execution, deploy a process, download AS2 artifacts log, download an atom log, download the process log, execute a process, get assignable roles, and provision partner customer account. So let's use download process log as an example to look at these actions. The process log operation can be used to download process execution logs. Process logs can be used for things like compliance or reporting or even diagnostics. You must also have the view results privilege enabled on your account to do this. Because large process logs can take quite a while to download, the Atmosphere API provides an asynchronous technique for requesting and downloading these logs. The client sends a process log request to Atmosphere that specifies the process execution ID and optionally the process execution log level. Atmosphere then returns a log download object that contains a URL with a unique process log ID. The client then opens the URL to download the log. Here are the fields associated with this request. The execution ID is used to retrieve the specific process log, and then you apply an optional filter for the log level. The response code is returned in the body of the response. A 200 status means successful, and here are some other possible status codes. Here is the SOAP response to the example process log request shown above, and you can see the URL is highlighted in blue. All Atomsphere API calls are authenticated by the Atomsphere username and account ID. This can be accessed from Boomi with an API connector or from other platforms that can format a SOAP or REST API call. Make sure the user has the appropriate privileges when using the API. Both the SOAP and REST-ish implementations of the Atomsphere API enforce the following usage limits. The number of requests is an account-specific limitation. It's calculated as 1,000 times your number of licensed connectors and calculated based on a rolling 24-hour period with usage calculated every hour. If the usage limit is exceeded, users receive an HTTP 503 response indicating that the server is temporarily unable to fulfill the request. And the rate of requests can come at five requests per second. If the usage limit is exceeded, the user receives an HTTP 503 response, again, indicating that the server is temporarily unable to fulfill the request.